So, ladies and gentlemen, I promised I would do an update on my Raspberry Pi aquarium project. Um, haven't got around to doing it until now. It's actually coming up to about 10 months ago that I started doing it. And it took a lot of refining to get it to work exactly how I want it to work. And this in itself is a version two of one I'd previously tried, which is also on another video. But it kind of works and I'm happy with how the end result is. So let's give a little tour of how it works. We have the Raspberry Pi box. So this was the one that I put together. It's gone through a couple of iterations. Um, but essentially, um, I won't go through the internals in any real depth, I can always go for that in another video because it's a bit more technical. But you've got the plugs on the outside and you've got four channels. So I've divided them up into two channels for daylight, one night channel and one for lightning, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, there's a jack there for a temperature probe. There is a, uh, another jack there that goes off to a water sensor. And finally another jack that goes off to sound. You've got three LEDs, one for power on, one for network activity, and the other one for CPU activity. Just makes it look cool, because to be fair, who doesn't like a flashing box? Um, and finally a nice on and off switch. I didn't want just a standard on off switch, I wanted a momentary switch. So that uses the Pi to put itself into halt mode or wake itself up from halt mode or turn it all on using relays. Again, that took a bit of getting to work, but. So, the lights themselves, I use Acroray bars. So, reason being that they're, they're quite cheap to get. Um, they're really common in the reef aquarium sort of area, which is why I had them in the first place. And I just pick up a couple more. They come in various colors. Um, they all run on 24 volts, and they all support PWM, which makes this whole process a lot easier. Um, because they have standards, they've not got any custom fittings. I think the newer ones, have like a USB that you can use, but all of these have a connector that takes them up to a, um, a power jack, which means I was able to, able to just make wires that help them connect to the circuit on the other side. So that's all running behind the scenes. So what makes it actually work? So it's running a, I originally wrote it in Python. I had a few problems. So I ended up writing something in PHP just to make it a bit easier because it's my PHP is kind of my main language, but so it runs a web interface. Um, which is what you're seeing here. I put a iPad mini into the wall, I forgot the name of them. I'm not a fan of Apple, so you can forgive me if I forget the name. Um, and that's why it's embedded in the wall, because I can't really think of a better use for it than to stick it in a wall. Um, so I just run it through a sandbox browser that puts it in full screen. So it is a website, but that's what it's showing. Um, this was all written using PHP, JavaScript, PHP for the back end, it's all API driven, so the website itself doesn't do anything, it just talks to the API layer, which is um, which is driven by PHP as well um, for the moment. We've got um, our four channels, so that's if we want to schedule the channel. So when you hit channel one, for example, you get a nice little graph that allows you to adjust the light levels. Now, for anyone who's familiar with um, the more expensive reef lighting systems by Eco Live, I kind of ripped it off from there. You can just drag down where you want the lighting to be for that particular time, and it will slowly work out and go up and down. So we've got channel one, channel two, and then we've got our night channel. So you can see how that kind of does a bit of an inversion. So that's the lighting. Um, we've got temperature. So again, this seems to always freeze it up, but it does show a graph of the temperature over time and where the current hour is. Um, I'm working on having this actually set the temperature, so I've got some switches that can control a heater that should hopefully allow it to control the temperature as well, rather than just reading it. Um, we have CPU usage, which is a CPU temperature rather, which is just useful just for me to see if it's doing something it shouldn't be. Um, water flow and total water change today. Now this is an interesting one, and I'll go through that in a moment. And the final one is a thunderstorm. So I will segue now into a demonstration of said storm when it's dark and not light like it is today and how that works. So that is running through a couple of switches itself. Inside our cupboard 
you can see I've got a couple of Wi-Fi switches in there. Well, I've got two at the moment. I've got a couple more to use for various other bits. But I've got the Raspberry Pi to switch them on and off as it's needed. And one of them switches goes up to a pump. The pump sits in my weir. And the weir pump ooh, sprays water through that pipe and that pipe will spray onto the surface and that gives the that gives sort of like the feeling of rain the sound of rain the speakers are able to um, control like a thunderstorm noise like the thunder and then the light does the flashing so it gives you a really realistic sound of a thunderstorm and it, it can start gradually and work its way up and all sorts still trying to sort of make that work entirely how I want it to work but whenever time permits I'll spend a bit of time on that um, the other switch I use for this whole water change malarkey so from anyone who's seen the first video I did I was really into the idea of not doing water changes and having something that could automate the process for me so in order to achieve that on my last aquarium I had a water in and a water out so here, <clears throat> coming in from the outside, we have uh, water coming in through the mains, relatively simple. That goes through that pipe into these two carbon blocks. Now, if you were running a reef, obviously this wouldn't work, um, but I am taking it down, just literally taking out chlorine and chloramine out of the water using them carbon blocks. Um, you've got a little T-junction there, which just allows me to get water out without it affecting the sensor if I need to. The next thing we've got there is a solenoid valve. Now that's connected to this switch, um, so I can switch that valve on and off using the Raspberry Pi, and that basically allows water to flow. And then finally, next to that, you can just about see is a hole sensor that will um, has been calibrated to record the amount of water passing through it. What happens to the water when it's added to the tank? So. It comes up obviously past the solenoid valve and joins on to the main ring of the filter and the outlet through that pipe you can just about see there. There's an overflow in my weir, so if the water level goes too high it merely runs down one of these pipes. That pipe goes to a pipe going outside, that goes through my kitchen and to the drain. Nice and simple. Can't add more water than it needs, can't overflow, and it just means that any excess water once the water change is run is just taken away. I have a job that runs on the Raspberry Pi that knows how much water I want to change each hour, and it will look, and if it hasn't changed the amount of water it needs to, it will turn on that pump, uh, turn on the solenoid valve. Solenoid valve will allow the water to flow. We get a little indication there that it's detecting water flowing and it adds it to here. So we get a nice graph showing when it's done a water change. You can see it's done a litre at 8 o'clock, a litre at 10, a litre at 12, a litre at 2, and it's now 2. So it wasn't won't run anymore until 6. So quite useful. We can also flip it onto a daily view where it shows our total water changed over a period of time. So you can see that it's, it's, it's doing it consistently. Um, it's doing it as it should be. If I was to manually run the process, it would obviously show higher on one particular day, um, as this is just reporting on the data. So that's really useful. Just I don't have to worry about any water changes. I don't need to record how much water changes has been done. Over the space of a week, it does 10% of this tank. Um, and it's all done automatically. And I've been running this non-stop now for about a month, and I've not once had to intervene to make sure it was doing its job or stop it or anything. So that's, that's really useful. So that's kind of the features that it's got at the moment. Um, I will segue now into a little bit about how the internals work. So this is where the magic happens. This is where I do a lot of my soldering and, and bits and pieces. And this is my hugely, well, not so hugely component drawer. So inside we have um, a standard Raspberry Pi. I use a Raspberry Pi W, um, but we've got a, a, a couple there, a couple of different ones doesn't really matter what you use. Um, we have, so I, I tried a few various things. So I tried using transistors to do the, the switching of the PWM signal for the early LED light dimming. Um, found that they were getting too warm, weren't quite doing what I wanted to do, and then one of them blew and I was like, right, bugger it, let's go with something a bit more robust. So then I changed to MOSFETs um, and found the same thing was happening. So I decided let's just cut out the middleman and use MOSFET modules. So you can pick these up um, on eBay, you can pick them up on wish.com. Um, they'll just be called MOSFET modules, um, and then they'll have the name of the chip on there. So I think these are running, I can't get it to focus. 
uh, IRF 520Ns. So these are not logic level MOSFETs, but um, I think the way the board's configured allows it to, to work in the same way that a logic level would. But essentially, you've got on here um, a V in, V ground, so that's, um, that's going to be your tw 24 volt in and ground. Um, and then your lights, so that's positive and negative for your LED lights. And then on these pins, you've got your five volt um, in, your ground, and your signal. So your signal you would connect to your GPIO, and that would be used to send the PWM signal, um, and the other two would just be connected constantly to five volt and ground, nice and simple. Once you've got these all hooked up, so you've got a power supply going into one of these, you've got your light module going into one, and obviously you can run these in parallel, so I've got one power supply driving um, one of these modules for each channel, um, and then going into either one, uh, two, or three lights, depending on what channel it is, some of them run more than one. Uh, and driving that signal, you're best off using some you can use um, Pi GPIO, um, I'm using um, something called Pi Blaster. That seemed to work really well for me. I had to play around the frequency because you get the frequency wrong and you'll find that this will get, as you can see, this, this is actually one that's blown. You can tell by the fact that the heatsink has um, lost all its black and has gone like a coppery colour because it's burnt all its paint off. Um, they get too hot if you get the frequency wrong. Um, they will also potentially, um, you could potentially damage the LEDs and you'll get like a buzzing noise. So. I, I'll share in the description what settings I used. Um, you have to actually build it from um, from scratch, the uh, Pi Blaster particularly, to make sure it's doing the right frequencies for you. So they're, they're driving the lights. So I've got obviously one of them for each channel, like I said. That's nice and easy. Um, various other things that I, I've used in there. So there's lots of relays. Here's a couple of ones that I'd left over. Um, in order to get my switching circuit um, so that it was one, you plug it in and you push it once and it switches on like a PC does, one switch on, press it again and then it shuts down, you have to use two of these, um, one of which handles the initial um, startup and then the second one is going to send a ground signal um, to the Pi to shut it down or halt it. Um, so it's probably best off if you're going to be doing lots of these is buying a board with multiple relays. That's usually an easier way of doing it. Uh, that's kind of the majority of it. Um, some of the other bits and pieces on there, it's just about having, you know, you're going to need some jacks. Um, you can need some jacks if you want to hook in sensors. I find these are, the, the, especially the three pins or the four pin jacks are useful if you're going to be hooking in things like temperature sensors. Just make sure that temperature sensors are put in the right way. If you put them in, um, if you hook up the wires in the wrong order, uh, you could potentially short it while you're plugging it in. So you kind of want it in the right order. I, I think that was just experimenting when I was when I was doing that to make sure it doesn't short when you plug the cable in. Um, don't go cheap on the connectors. I bought these ones, and they said that they were free, uh, free pole, and they didn't actually work. So yeah, China's not always great. Um, glands for when you're coming out of the box are useful, just if you're going to be pulling on them, you want to make sure it's not going to pull them out of the bits. Um, you're going to need plenty of jumpers to go from pins to various pins. Another one, go on wish and get lots and lots of them. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much what you're going to need. It's there, There's no real science to it. I'll share my source code for what I've written. It's not great, it's been rushed, it's been built bit and bit, piece and piece over time. I have plans to rebuild it in Python, which I originally wanted to do. I just needed to get something out the door, so PHP was a, a quick one for me to try and get something working. Um, the one that I write in Python will, is going to be aimed more of an entire house-based API, something that I can hook into multiple systems, not just the aquarium and control from web interface. I know there's plenty of ones on the market, but hey, I like doing things myself. so. Um, I'll put a few more links in the description that might be useful for anyone, but here gives you an idea of, of how it works and where we're up to. Thanks for watching guys, bye for now.